Hello and welcome to Hornbill TV's Prime at 9. I am Aki Vitua and now the headlines. The centre has said that the same vaccine will be administered as the third dose of booster or precaution dose of vaccine. Those who have received COVID shield as their first and second dose will receive COVID shield as their third dose and vice versa. A powerful IED blast at Usoi Pokpi, Sangom Sang, Thubal district in Manipur has reportedly killed one personnel of 16 SAM rifles Ekoi. The IED has been allegedly planted by the proscribed PREPAK Pro, according to sources. The centre has issued new guidelines amid spike in COVID-19 cases and Omicron variant. Patients under home isolation will be discharged and end isolation after at least seven days have passed from testing positive and no fever for three successive days. Mumbai police probing bully by app have arrested the third accused behind the controversy. The police said that they have arrested one 21-year-old Mayan Rawal and have also detected links to Nepal. And now the news in details. A powerful IED blast at Usoi Pokpi, Sangom Sang, area under Lilong Police Station in Thubal District, Manipur, reportedly killed one personnel of the 16 Assam Rifles E Company and injured another at around 1.30 pm on Wednesday. According to police and reliable sources, the IED was planted near a water supply tank. The deceased have been identified as L. Wangsu, 30, hailing from Arunachal Pradesh, and the injured Pinku Das from Tripura. Immediately after the blast, Thubal SP Jugesh Chandra, Haubijam, and Lilong AC MLA Y. Antas rushed to the spot. The IED has been allegedly planted by the proscribed Pre Park Pro, according to sources. After the blast, the deceased and the injured were rushed to Lilong's Noor Hospital. Further details and reports are awaited. The Ministry of Home Affairs on Wednesday sought a detailed report from the Punjab government regarding the security lapse during Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to the state. The state government has also been asked to fix responsibility for this lapse and take strict action. The action was taken after the Prime Minister's convoy during his visit to National Martyrs Memorial in Punjab via road reached a flyover where the road was blocked by some protesters. The Prime Minister was stuck on the flyover for 15 to 20 minutes. This was a major lapse in the security of the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, Prime Minister Narendra Modi landed at Batinda this morning from where he was to go to the National Martyrs Memorial at Husseiniwala by helicopter. Due to rain and poor visibility, the Prime Minister waited for about 20 minutes for the weather to clear out, said a Home Ministry statement. When the weather did not improve, it was decided that he would visit the National Martyrs Memorial via road, which would take more than two hours, the statement said. The PM then proceeded to travel by road after confirmation of necessary security arrangements by the DGP of Punjab Police, the statement said. Around 30 kilometers away from the National Martyrs Memorial in Husseiniwala, when the Prime Minister's convoy reached a flyover, it was found that the road was blocked by some protesters, it was stated. The Prime Minister was stuck on a flyover for 15 to 20 minutes and this was a major lapse in the security of the Prime Minister, read the statement. The Home Ministry said the Prime Minister's schedule and travel plan was communicated well in advance to the Punjab government. As per procedure, the Home Ministry said they have to make necessary arrangements for logistics, security as well as keep a contingency plan ready. In a significant administrative event, the top brass of India's central bureaucrats from the Ministry of Home Affairs are on a visit to the Northeast region states. It was reported on January 4th that the central officials were to discuss, among others, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act, security situation, and to resolve interstate conflicts. To discuss the latest on the visit of Home Secretary Ajay Kumar Bhalla and its significance, we have in the newsroom our senior news analyst, Al Nguli, who will offer more perspective of the center's top bureaucrats' visit. Well, thank you so much, sir, for joining us. And uh, starting off with the question, there have been no updates about this special, uh, the Home min Ministry or rather the Home Secretary's visit. What do you think would be the agenda and what is it, would his itinerary be? Yeah, Akivi, uh, 
It's very interesting that we have not heard from any of the media houses. You don't see stories in the newspapers or TV regarding the Home Secretary's visit to the Northeast region. And it is even more significant, the lack of new space for Mr. Bala's visit, because this is not an ordinary government official. This is the Home Secretary himself, and it is not every day that we have a Home Secretary from the center coming over to the northeastern states to discuss the Armed Forces Special Powers Act or the internal security arrangements or to discuss border disputes. Uh, there, there have been absolutely nothing in this regard since the report uh, came out, uh, even yesterday too. And so far, the only updates we have right now is Mr. Bala and the intelligence chief, they are all right now in Assam. I am not sure, but that's the report that we have from some of the media houses in the Northeast. Uh, according to reports that we have today, and that, that's the only latest report about his presence in the Northeast right now. He attended a police conference in Assam uh, yesterday, and it seems uh, they were there to give uh, perspective on the security scenario in the Northeast. So I don't know what it means. There were no other details. But originally, when the report first came out that Mr. Bala was to, re, uh, to visit the North is, there were three things that they were supposed to discuss according to uh, the information that we have from the media houses in, in the capital. First, they were to discuss interstate conflict. Second, uh, they were to uh, discuss the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. And third, they were to discuss uh, police forces of different states clashing. So in this regard, I think uh, we have been uh, very familiar with the news reports over the past uh, several months. The interstate conflicts uh, might be referring, most possibly might be referring to the border issues between Assam and Meghalaya, Assam and Naglen, Assam and Manipur, uh, I'm sorry, Mizoram. And the Armed Forces Special Power Act, I think the agenda is something that came out from the happenings after the December 4 ambush in Mon. And in regard to the clash between police forces of two different states, I believe they are referring to the clash between Mizoram police and Assam security forces several months ago. So that's the update right now. All right, sir. So according to the report we got that along with the Home Secretary, there are other senior officials that have joined him on this Northeast tour. Mm. So, sir, what is the security aspect of his visit? Uh, yes, the Home Affairs Ministry in India is like the mother uh, of the household of the uh, of the household of the country. You know, if something happens in the household, is the mother that rushes first to make peace. It is the mother that rushes to see who is wrong, who is right, and what changes are to be made. The Home Affairs Ministry is in charge of the internal internal policy uh, engagements of the country. So when there are interstate disputes, they are normally the first to uh, assess the situation and recommend a solution, for example. And in this case, as I've mentioned, the three subjects are uh, interstate disputes clash between uh, police forces of two, two different states and major legislations like the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. So the administrative angle is that the Home Affairs Ministry, and especially uh, in this context, the Home Secretary, he is the mother right now. So he's in the region to assess the situation. There are a lot of different administrative aspects to his visit. Risk assessment first and there is expert counseling, expert advisory. And these are the perspective that he will assess from the ground and take it back to the government. And from there, the government will take the recommendation or the perspective that the Home Secretary has brought from the notice, after which the government will take decisions. All right, sir. So it was reported that uh, along with Home Secretary Bhalla's visit, you know, they will also be talking or deliberating more on the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Is there any administrative angle to, to it or what is the administrative angle to this discussion? Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, like I've mentioned earlier, 
uh, the visit of the Home Secretary is not just to uh, see the sights and to experience the sound and smell of the Northeast region. They are not tourists. They are here for hard policy decisions. They are here to assess situations that only the centre can handle. The subjects that the centre handles, one of them, and it's not in the hands of the state, is security and internal security and internal peace. And when we're talking about Armed Forces Special Power, it, this uh, Special Powers Act, this is not something the states or the police agencies or uh, commissions can handle. This is this is an area of the central government. And considering that we recently had a very major tragic incident. This on December 4 in Mon District, uh, I think it is very natural for the Home Ministry to start working on how to engage the ground realities, and especially the people they have been demanding a repeal of the Act. So what the government right now is doing is they are sending, sending the invoice. They are here in the region to assess the situation, take risk assessment, and form a perspective for a framework for policy formulation for the state government. That is the administrative angle. All right, sir. All right, also, sir, recently, the Honorable Chief Minister of Nagaland, Nifirio, along with the Deputy Chief Minister Y. Patton and T.R. Ziliang, had mm -hmm. gone to the center along with Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma to meet the Union Home Minister Amit Shah. And after they came back from that visit, the Honorable CM Nifirio had a press conference in which he explained that a special committee has been instituted just to take care of the AFSPA and whether AFSPA should remain in the Northeast or rather especially in Nagaland. Now on the 31st of December, the Union government extended the AFSPA rule in Nagaland for another six months. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that this extension of the AFSPA for another six months came at a very unusual time knowing that knowing what happened on the eve of December 4th? Yeah, uh, that that is a question I think that most of us have been thinking about. Um, right after the ambush, it happened on December 4, and then suddenly three or four days ago, the disturbed area egg was again extended. And it is, it is very unusual because uh, normally, since the Armed Forces Special Powers Act was uh, instated in the Northeast region, it was a regular affair. Uh, because after every six months, if the assessment is in, uh, is consistent with the uh, with the policies of the state government in risk assessment, and they feel that uh, there is still some need or some need for peace to be established in the region, or there is still some problem here and there, and we s we need to impose the disturbed area act again or extend it again, then we will do it. It has been a regular affair, but just like you pointed out, it is a very strange coincidence that just went coincidence that when mm, when the six months period was about to be completed uh, the ambush happened and now uh, it's all the more convenient for the government of India to extend it uh, right after what happened in Mon. So yeah I, it is it is a very strange coincidence and I, I we can't really say what's going on we can't really put aspersions on the government or on anyone or any agency but it is true i will agree with that that it is a very strange coincidence that all all of this has been happening in regard to the panel uh like we have discussed before um the government the state government of nagaland uh, for example they have uh, practically no say in all this this is a central legislation that will require as a legislative tool only which the central government can handle all right so as the reports have said that the Home Secretary is in the northeastern region and he's here to assess the situation or rather the ground reality mm. of everything that is happening in the northeast. Does mm. this mean that the Home, the home Secretary along with all the other senior officials will also visit Nagaland? Uh, most possibly because uh, say the Armed Forces Special, uh, Special Powers Act, I keep jumbling o uh, jumping over this uh, particular, uh, particular act, I'm sorry for that. Uh, in regard to the act, it is, it is something that has been uh, engaged in the Northeast for a very long time. And this is not something new. The act is not something new. The happenings that have been happening under the guise of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act is not new. What is new is that the Home Secretary is here in the Northeast region after a major violation uh, that has been committed under the guise of the act. Uh, that is the uh, December 4 
Mon and Bush. So now it is it is relevant here to uh, note that uh, right now what the panel is doing is uh, it is building a sort of building a sort of arguments, a set of recommendations that will either tell the government to either repeal it or not. But like I've said before, the Home Ministry and the officials of the Home Affairs uh, Department is here in, in, in the notice to assess the situation. So in regard to the Armed Forces uh, Special Powers Act, it connects directly to what happened to the to the Mon and Bush uh, on December 4. So there is a very high likelihood that even the ministry's official will be here in Nagaland. It's not only in Assam, but they'll definitely be here because the panel. I think they're already working out a process to set a, uh, to submit a set of recommendations. So they'll most likely be here in Nagaland soon. All right, sir. Thank you so much for all the details and the updates that you've just provided. We will still continue if there are any further more updates and also if there are any new developments that take place from the home secretary's visit to the northeastern region so thank you so thank much thank you Akibi. thank you all right so that was our senior news analyst sir al who will just explain the reason of the visit of the home secretary to the northeastern region and also the importance of the home secretary actually being in the northeast region on the eve of december 4th on that tragic day it caused a huge uproar all over the state of nagaland and the first thing that all civil societies and public organizations did was raise the cry for the repealing of the draconian law which is the armed forces special powers act and on that day because of which the nagaland assembly too also passed a resolution in the state assemblies repealing the armed forces special power act after that there was the chief minister of nagaland nifurio along with the deputy chief minister and also NPF leader TR Ziliang went to Delhi to meet the Union Home Minister after which after coming back they held a press conference in which it was stated that a special committee would be formed and within 45 days they would give a verdict as to whether AFSPA should stay or not stay so that 45 p day period has already started to tick and now we will come to know about the judgment very soon maybe in the months to come so that is the latest on what the Home Secretary's visit was now moving on to further news the center on Wednesday said that the same vaccine will be administered as the third dose of booster or pre caution dose of vaccine and no mix and match will be allowed as of now. This means those who have received COVID shield as their first and second dose will receive COVID shield as their third dose. Similarly, those who have received co vaccine in their first two doses will receive co vaccine in the third dose. Niti Ayog member Dr. VK Paul said during the press briefing of the health ministry. The government has not taken any decision on mix and match of vaccines in India, though Dr. Paul had earlier said that there was no problem in principle to mix and match. India's decision to administer the third dose comes amid an Omicron alert. On the lines of booster doses being administered in their countries, the government has chosen the most vulnerable sections for the third dose. According to new guidelines, patients under home isolation will stand discharged and end isolation after at least seven days have passed from testing positive and no fever for three successive days. There is no need for retesting after the home isolation period is over, it added. According to the guidelines, the patient should be clinically assigned as mild a symptomatic case by the treating medical officer. Further, a designated control room contact number at the district sub-district level shall be provided to the family to get suitable guidance for undertaking testing, clinical management related guidance, assignment of a hospital bed if warranted. Such cases should have the requisite facility at the residence for self-isolation and for quarantining the family contacts. A caregiver, ideally someone who has completed his COVID-19 vaccination schedule, should be available to provide care on 24 into 7 basis. Elderly patients aged more than 60 years and those with comorbid conditions such as hypertension, diabetes, heart disease, chronic lung, liver, kidney disease, cerebrovascular disease, etc. shall only be allowed home isolation after proper evaluation by the treating medical officer. The Mumbai police probing bully by app have arrested the third accused behind the controversy. The police said that they have arrested one 21-year-old Mayank Rawal and have also detected links to Nepal. Earlier, the police had arrested one engineering student Vishal Kumar Jha and one Shweta Singh. 
According to the police, Shweta was the mastermind behind the controversy. She was in touch with the handler, which is being operated from Nepal. On his instructions, she made a Twitter handle with the name of at the rate Jat Khalsa 07 and started uploading photos of women of a particular religion. Her friend Gio, whom she met on social media, was asking her to do all this. He is based in Nepal. The Mumbai police has recorded the statement of Shweta Singh and Vishal Kumar Jha. Jha is on police remand till January 10th, while Shweta's remand will end on January 5th. The Mumbai police have confronted Shweta and Vishal. They both reportedly knew each other through social media sites. We have arrested three persons, including a lady. Two persons are from Uttarakhand. We have arrested so far. We have apprehended these people from different places. Our investigation will proceed and progress and whoever all are involved into this planning and operation of defamation of particular section of the society, we will make our best efforts to apprehend all these people. Delhi's Intelligence, Fusion and Strategic Operation DCP KPS Malhotra on January 5th informed that the Mutual Legal Assistance Treaty procedure in the Suli app case is completed in India and very soon it will be delivered to the Department of Justice. He also said that the Bulibai case has been transferred to them. Bulibai case has been transferred to us and the MLAT procedure in the Suli app case is completed in India and will soon be delivered to the Department of Justice, he said. Details will be sought through the MLAT accordingly and will be shared through Interpol, he added. The Congress on Wednesday postponed its women's marathon titled Ladki Hu, Lad Sakti Hu across Uttar Pradesh in a view of rise in COVID-19 cases. At least seven to eight marathons were reportedly planned in Noida, Varanasi and other districts of the states in the coming days. The UP Congress Committee also wrote to Chief Election Commissioner Shushil Chandra to cancel big rallies in view of anticipated third COVID-19 wave. Later, Congress General Secretary Organization KC Venugopal said the party will postpone all major rallies in Uttar Pradesh and other pole-bound states. We have asked state units to assess the COVID-19 situation in their states and take a decision on holding rallies. Venugopal was quoted as saying by news agency ANI. We already decided to hold the rallies, magic mega rallies and marathons for 15 days. Sir, due, to, due to the COVID increase in cases. Is this for the rally for the UP or the 5 rajas are going to be there? No, the 5 rajas are a different decision. Hai. We already told the PCCs to ascertain the situation on the respective states and take a final call on their level. So Congress is going to be a strong view that the definitely Priyanka ji has a strong view that the priority should be human lives. Hmm. Because now, because we, last time also we saw that. जी whenever the covid was the last time assembly election our own prime minister himself has attended a huge gatherings public meetings there was that was one of the reason for increasing covid now congress is taking an initiative under the leadership of priyanka ji is in up that we are holding major rallies for 15 days then we will see whether the case is going to increase or decrease then we will take a final call on it. Okay. So do you think we should, the other... UPCC, UPCC already decided to hold the rallies, magic, mega rallies and marathons for 15 days so, due, to, due to the COVID. And that was all for this hour's bulletin. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Hornwell TV. Goodbye.